Tonight, there is yet another explosive story about Trump-endorsed Georgia Senate candidate Herschel Walker. This one, unlike the last ones, comes to us from the New York Times, which is reporting that an ex-girlfriend who Walker reportedly paid to have an abortion in 2009 is now alleging that two years later in 2011, he urged her to have a second abortion. Instead, she chose to have their son, and they ended their relationship. The Times reports that, quote, Walker has barely been involved in their now 10-year-old son's life, offering little more than court-ordered child support and occasional gifts. She tells the Times, quote, as a father, he's done nothing. He does exactly what the court says, and that's it. He has to be held responsible, just like the rest of us. And if you're going to run for office, you need to own your life. This most recent news comes after a week of reports from the Daily Beast alleging that Walker, a guy who right now is campaigning for a complete and total abortion ban, paid for a girlfriend's abortion back in 2009. I should note, the Times explicitly says the woman in question is the same woman. They went out and verified, essentially, the Daily Beast report and then advanced it. So we're not talking about it different individuals. That is what the Times did with the story. NBC News has not independently verified either of these two stories. Walker has denied the Daily Beast reports, but has not responded to this new reporting in the New York Times, seeming to confirm some key details. Joining me now is Ellie Mistel, justice correspondent for The Nation, who has been closely following the Walker campaign. Um, this is this is not a, yet another day, yet another not great headline for Herschel Walker and his quest to become senator from Georgia. Yeah, Chris, I want to start with the gospel according to John. For when Herschel Walker lies, he speaks in his native tongue, for he is a liar and the father <laughs> of lies. Indeed, Chris, being the father of lies, that's about the only thing that Herschel Walker didn't try to abort. We are now learning, right? And the, the problem here is that I, I focus in on the lying because one of the, you know, Republicans are making a, a, a raft of bad, hypocritical, and frankly pathetic arguments in his defense. But one of the consistent ones that you keep hearing is this idea that he is born again, this idea that people make mistakes in the past and then they can be forgiven. Well, one of the first keys to forgiveness is admitting that you have done something wrong. Mm -hmm. And as of right now, Herschel Walker takes no responsibility. Another word Republicans like to hypocritically throw around. He takes no rep responsibility and he takes no honesty in his own actions. I mean, Chris, look, I am Catholic. We've got rules on this, all right? I know how, how, how many Hail Marys I have to say if I get a C in French, all right? And the, 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 the entry point to forgiveness is telling the truth, something that Herschel Walker seems constitutionally unable to do. Yeah, it's a really good point. I was just saying this on Twitter. I mean, I, I too, I was raised Catholic. And, um, you know, you got to you got to come clean uh, before you before you get to be forgiven. You don't just to say, I'm saved by the grace of Jesus Christ. Ergo, I got to get a jail free hall pass for the rest of my life. But crucially, also in the in the non theological you know, context, just the political context, when this story broke, You'll remember the, the Georgia political operative, uh, Eric Erickson, said, oh, I thought we all knew this. Uh, pe people change. And he got pilloried for that, understandably, because it showed a certain hypocrisy about how seriously he takes abortion. Uh, that is it indeed the murder of a child? You don't seem to think so. But also had to delete it because it, it looked bad. But that was the correct political instinct. The correct political instinct was to do that and not lie and say, this is defamatory, I'm suing, because the woman in question is out there talking to reporters it's not going to go you, away. Because you pay for an abortion by check, all right? <laughs> I mean, I mean, for, for, for your younger viewers, he put the abortion on the blockchain, all right? Like, that, that, that's how we know this happened. But uh, again, Chris, I think, I think your instinct is right that the interrogation really isn't about Walker, who is a minstrel who has been sent here to, to play black Tommy Tuberville. Like, that, that's, that's all he is. He's not actually important. The interrogation needs to happen with the Republican Party. And because what we see time and again is that this debate, this this argument over abortion, it's never been about abortion. It's never been about morality. It's certainly never been about Jesus. It's always been about controlling women. And that's why, as the comedian uh, John Fiedelsang says, um, uh, Republicans only believe in abortion if you need it to save the life of a political candidate, right? Because they are so consumed by their grasp at power that they are literally, by their own words, not what I believe, what they believe, they are literally going to support a person who tried to, who successfully paid for one baby murder 
and try to murder other babies, according to them, over a Senate candidate who simply says, yeah, it's other people's call. Yeah, that's not my bad. Yeah, it should be up. It should be between a woman and her doctor, and the state should do things that are appropriate to a secular government. That's 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 Warnock's position, and they're going to reject. I believe again, the theological construct is free will. They're going to they're going to reject free will and instead go with this liar who, according to their own beliefs, supports like has has personally um, aided in the murder of children. According there, to that, there was news today that he has fired his political director, which I thought was kind of funny because I was like, "Well, I don't think it's the political director's fault." But <laughs> there's also there is this there is bad thing, dude. yeah, right, exactly. He didn't write the check, I don't think. Um, but but there's also an upcoming debate with Raphael Warnock, and an interesting question that I saw reported on today. Warnock is not touching this again. I don't. I had never run a campaign. I'm. I don't. I don't know what the right call is here. I sort of understand why, if you're Warnock, why get in, involved, but. One imagines this will come up the debate. Well, Chris, let's here. Here's the difference between Democrats and Republicans, right? Because if this was a Democratic candidate in this kind of trouble at the debate, the Republicans would have the woman in the front row. <laughs> yes, that's what I they mean, did. That's right. That's how they actually roll with that's this. The literal stuff, right? thing it's they like, did. Yes. You know, Democrats are always trying to play nice, are always trying to stay above the fray, are always trying to talk to people up here. Republicans get down in the dirt with this stuff. A, a Democratic version of Herschel Walker wouldn't have survived the week. I mean, um, a Democratic, a let's, be, let's be clear. A Democratic version of Herschel Walker would not be a viable candidate in the state of Georgia. I mean, b before this week. I mean, that, at all. <laughs> There's a very different standard here to begin with. Ellie Mistal, uh, always great to talk to you. Have a great weekend, man.